Hello guys, we're speaking about what love is according to God's love and how we are to love God with everything and love our neighbors ourselves. And actually this love right here is what is going to get us into heaven. Nothing else. Not our works, not everything doing with a perfect successful ministry, everything else. This is what's going to get us into it. And I'm going to break down this. It's very important that you stay and watch until the end so you can see all these points and how they come together and how we are to be in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, love, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way, is not irritable, and keeps no wrong record of being wrong. It does not rejoice in injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth runs out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Hallelujah. So, number one, patient and kind. We're going to go ahead and break this down. Proverbs 14, 29. The people with understanding control their anger. A hot temper shows great foolishness. So, right here, patience would be self-control. So, impatient would be a lack of control. And that produces anger is impatience. So, everyone knows, you know, you could be impatient and you get irritable. That's because anger comes along with that. That's why patience and kindness goes together and impatience and anger goes together a lot of times in the Bible. So if I can control my anger by being patient and kind, I'll have understanding. I'll be wise. If not, I'll show great foolishness. Maybe not at first, but I will eventually. Let's continue. We'll talk about kindness and kind of put this together. So Ephesians 4.32. Instead, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So we see major key points right here that forgiving one another is God through Christ has forgiven you is the major point right here to being kind. I can't be kind to someone if I have a bitter heart towards them. I can't fake it either because even if I fake on the outward appearance, my inside is going to be angry, you see? And that's gonna produce impatience and it's also going to produce impatience in a lot of other areas of my life. Let's see if I'm talking to somebody and I'm being kind to them just because I know it's right, but then again, I choose not to work it out in my heart and I have a grudge against them. Now I walk away, I'm gonna be bearing that grudge and I'm gonna take it out on other people. So I'm going to be impatient. So in these things, so that's why it's important that we get in the secret place. We release it and confess it unto God. And so he can help us to form our heart because it's only spending time in him that I can love my neighbor properly. It's only spending time with him. I can love my neighbor properly. So in order for us to love properly and do this stuff, it's time with God because his nature is love. And the more time we spend in God's nature with him, love, we're going to love. It's going to form our heart into love. Hallelujah. So Luke 6, 35 and 36 goes on to say, No, I am telling you to love people that want to hurt you. Do good things to them. Lend to the people, even though you may not receive things back again. Then God will prepare good things for you. He is kind even to the people who do not say thank you. He is kind even to very bad people. If you live like this, you will show that you are really children of the powerful God who is over all. You should be kind to one another as God your Father is kind. So we should be kind to other people as God or Father is kind. We, see, we hear kind is said over and over and over again in this. It's a fruit of the Spirit. That's why as well. So in this, we bless those we're blessed. We curse those we'll be cursed. We curse those with bitterness. Bitterness comes back. It's a poison. It's better off that we bless those and we become blessed. We bless them in health. We become good health. We bless them in all these other areas and we get the benefits. Why? Because it allow, allows the Holy Spirit to work in our heart. It allows the Holy Spirit to work in my heart when I bless someone. Why? Because it's His Word, and His Word stands forever. Hallelujah. So, we are to be kind and patient, and that only comes out with time with God. Some people say, I try and try and try to do this. I try to do this. I try to be kind. I try to do this. Here's the thing. You have to stop trying and start putting more time in with God and let Him produce the work in you before it comes through you. So then you'll try and it will happen. You'll succeed. Why? Because it's not through your works alone. It's God with you. That's why Paul said, I've done more than all the other apostles, but it wasn't actually me. It was God in me doing the work because it's our dependency on God. It's him who forms the heart to produce the great work. Hallelujah. So number two, not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. Let's talk about jealousy. It's very important here. Proverbs 14:30. A peaceful heart leads to a healthy body. Jealousy is like cancer of the bones. So we see right here, a peaceful heart leads health to the body. And we know that because peace and life comes from Jesus Christ. And the more time we spend in him, hallelujah, we, we get that quite a bit. But we find out right here, jealousy is like a cancer of the bones. So it can either spread rapidly or slowly. It's poison. That's just, you know, short, short way to put it. It's like poison. So if I now want what someone else has, 
and I get, I, I'll get mad because I don't have it. That's what the book of James says. If there's envy, jealousy, and all this stuff, it produces great strife. So strife always comes from jealousy. And a lot of times it's because they can't get what they want, so they strife and quarrel. They attack. So people that usually attack are usually the ones who are jealous, and they deny that they're jealous. And it's why that the more time we spend in God, we find out that attacking people is not well. It's not good. Hallelujah. We are to pray for them. As Jesus prayed upon that cross, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's true love. True love is praying, taking time out of your own time and praying for someone else's true love. It's not necessarily to spend time with them all the time. Anybody can spend time with anybody all the time and have hatred towards them and not like them in the area. I'm talking about the love that you, you sacrifice your own time to pray for them in their well-being and bless them in all things. That's true love. That's what Jesus did for us. And that's what we should do for others. Hallelujah. So, boastful, proud, and rude. Proverbs 11, 2 to 3. is when pride comes, boiling up with arrogant attitude of self-importance, then comes dishonor and shame. So when pride's there, dishonor and shame happens. You know, persecution can happen, but you won't have dishonor and shame from God. But if pride's there, you're going to have dishonor and shame from God and from people, you know. So it's, it's worse to have it from, you know, from God. But with the humble, the teachable, who have been chiseled by trial and who have learned to walk humbly with God. So it shows right here, here is the humble, a Christian. A Christian is what? They learn to walk humbly with God. You learn, you're teachable, you're chiseled by the trial. It doesn't mean you get it all right. It means that you're learning to get it all right. It means you've made many mistakes, but God's there to help you and pull you out of those mistakes. That's the whole point of being humble. And you walk with God. When you walk with God, you learn His ways. Then after that, there's wisdom and soundness of mind. There's peace of mind. And soundness means it's calm. It's able to tell the right direction. Yes, no. No, yes. You see, it's able to do those things. So in this, we, we find that out quite a bit. So the, the integrity and moral courage of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. So eventually the ones that refuse this in God, teaching in God, will, it will eventually destroy them. And that's usually what comes into this, boastful, proud, and rude. So Proverbs 31, 26, it's another one. When she speaks, she says wise words. She is kind as she teaches people what is right. When she's kind, she teaches people what is right. So we find out right here that if someone's angry and they teach people what is right, it's not the right spirit, it's not God. Just because someone thinks that they're right, if they do it out of the wrong spirit, it's going to project the wrong spirit and it's going to do worse to an individual than help them. But if someone comes up and says, let's not do this, let's do this, let's do that. This is how we do it. You don't do it right here. And they're kind about it. It's going to help them more. But if they come up with a judgmental and critical attitude going, you're just dumb, duh, and you begin to judge them, it's not going to work that way. It ain't going to work well at all. And this comes into, it's pride. It's all pride. So when she speaks, she says wise words. Why? Because she's kind. And how she teach people what is right? She's kind. So kind is a very... You know, important thing, Jesus was always kind. Even when he spoke to the Pharisees and everything else, he was stern, but he was loving because he prayed for them consistently. So number three, doesn't demand its own way. I don't have a scripture, but it's pretty self-explanatory. It doesn't demand its own way. It's willing to put others' interests above your own as long as it does not come against the principles of God. If it comes against the ways of God, we are not to do it. But if it doesn't, we are to be a servant to one another and help them in love. Hallelujah. So number four, it is not irritable. Proverbs 25, 28 goes on to say, a person without self-control is like a city with broken down walls. So here's self-control again. Self-control is a very important thing when it comes to anger. Because self-control, we need to pray to God when we're getting ready to lose control and have him help us and ask him to help us. And he will help us. And when that happens, we'll be able to stay strong in him in the foundation. The more time we spend in him, the more our anger is going to fade away. Hallelujah. Because the more I'm going to surrender unto him. So in this, we don't want a city with broken down walls because the enemy will just come in and attack us anytime. So it doesn't mean you won't be blessed by God. It means the enemy is going to attack you through all your blessings. You will never have peace. And that's not a good thing to have. So, and keeps no record of being wrong. Proverbs 10, 12. Hatred keeps old quarrels alive, but love draws a veil over every insult and finds a way to make sin disappear. So right here, hatred keeps old quarrels alive. So when someone keeps bringing the same thing over and over and over, up again and again, there's hatred somewhere. Someone needs healed. That's hatred. They ain't love. And it says, love draws a veil over every insult. That means it covers it. It goes, God, help me throw this out. I'm going to throw away this wrong instantly. I don't want to hold it. And when that happens, you throw it out. Throw it out. Then you find a way to make sin disappear. How do you do that? By loving through it. Love covers a multitude of sins. That's really what this means. Hallelujah. So Proverbs 19, 11. Sensible people control their temper. 
They earn respect by overlooking wrongs. So how do you control your temper? Overlooking wrongs. Overlooking wrongs. That's how you control your temper. They earn respect by overlooking. Okay, it's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You know, let's move on from this. Let's do this. Let's do that. And they love through it. They pray for one another. You see? So in this, sensible people control their temper because they overlook wrongs. So number five, does not rejoice in injustice, but rejoices when the truth wins. This is very important. Proverbs 24, 17 to 18. Don't rejoice when your enemies fall. Don't be happy when they stumble. For the Lord will be displeased with you and will turn his anger away from the man. If he turns it away from them, it's coming on to us. So let's not displease the Lord. When someone, when our enemy falls, let us pray for them all the more. Let us bless them more so they can get back up and come unto the Lord and be saved and be blessed in health and everything in their life. Because the more that we pray for that, the more it's going to come back unto us. And if I go and say, well, they deserve that. Look at that. Look what they did because of this and that. And I begin, oh, yeah, yeah, they deserve that. One thing's going to happen. Actually, two things. God's going to be displeased, for one. And anger's going to come after us. Because if he turns it away from them, where is it going? It's hitting me now. It's hitting us now. Let's not do that. Let's, not, let's stay away from God's anger. Hallelujah. Let's not be disciplined. Let the others be disciplined. But let us keep praying for them. So that way they can come to know the Lord in truth. So it doesn't rejoice in injustice. It rejoices when the truth wins. The truth wins, why? When someone comes to the Lord fully. You know, the word of God is being proclaimed. That word is coming alive. When that happens, we have truth that rejoices in our heart. Hallelujah. So, number six, never gives up. Second Chronicles 15, 7. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. And also talks about in um, Hebrews 11, I think it's eleven six. it says, um, all who come to God must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And this is pretty much the exact same thing. You know, be strong, never give up, and your work will be rewarded. So right here, when you are strong and you don't ever give up, God's going to reward you eventually. That's just what it says. The word, word of God's truth, it gets into my heart, it produces great truth. That's how it is. You know, we can't overlook and overwrite the word of God. It's truth. The word says don't ever give up, and you're going to be blessed. That's it. Don't ever give up in God, you'll be blessed. Don't ever stop spending time with Him and doing what is right in, you know, in His eyes and loving your neighbor as yourself and you will be blessed. Never lose faith, Hebrews 10, 36. For you have need of patient endurance to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising so that when you have carried out the will of God, you may receive and enjoy to the full what is promised. So he says right here, you have need of patient endurance. Why? You know, to, to build genuine faith. To bear up under difficult circumstances without compromise. So we don't compromise our faith later when circumstances come. We'll be even more bold when we endure through it, knowing Jesus Christ. So then when you've carried out the will of God, that helps us to carry out the will of God too. You'll be able to receive and enjoy full what is promised. Not just some. You'll get all the promises of God that God has for your life. We are to endure, never lose faith. If you feel a time where you're losing faith, get more time with God and confess it unto Him and He will help you, I promise you. He does it every time. He does it every time. He never disappoints. Hallelujah. So, always hopeful. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances for this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So number one, always be jo joyful. How? Never stop praying. That's how you always get joyful. Don't ever stop praying. You have the Spirit of God that begins to, why? The Spirit of God is joy. So the more I keep praying, the more I'm going to keep Him going in my life, in my heart, turning over and over again. He's going to produce great joy. I can have down moments, but it won't stay. It'll turn to joy moments. Be thankful in all circumstances. That's another thing to have joy. Get thankful. Even if you don't feel like it, thank Him many ways and you become thankful the more that you do it. It's kind of like if someone goes, they don't, they feel down and they start laughing. If they keep laughing, eventually they're going to get up. They're going to get pulled up. Because the more that you do something, the more it's going to happen. That's the same thing with thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. So those who belong to Christ Jesus do what? They don't ever stop praying and they're thankful in all circumstances. So for you to belong to Jesus Christ, to be His, you need not to stop praying and always to be thankful. Hallelujah. So, let's continue. Endurance through every circumstance. James 1, 2-4. Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come to your way, consider an opportunity for great joy. So here's joy again. 
For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. So what is he saying right here if we break this down? When troubles of any kind come your way, consider it a great joy. Why? Because that's how you give thanksgiving. You keep giving thanks no matter what. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So now God is growing your faith so you can endure and get the promises that he has promised for you and keep them, not just get them and lose them. God doesn't want you to lose them once you keep them. So let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you'll be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Now you'll be needing nothing. You'll be perfect and complete. This is our promise from God that he has said that he will do. We are to be content. How do we get content? The more time we put in him. Hallelujah. So I hope this has blessed you, encouraged you to get closer to the word of God. We need this love of God in our hearts, because if not, we can't love others properly like we should. It starts from the inside out, not the outside in. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.